Who is going to win this season? Um, that is the question, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know who's going to win this season, but I hope it's me. <laughs> if we're being honest, I want to win this season. Well, obviously, I'm going to say me. I mean, why not, right? I can win this season. <laughs> Hopefully me. You better watch out because there's players that are amazing out there. So I think it's going to be a great show. BN presented by Aspiration. There's only one individual championship in the worldwide sport of volleyball, and it's contested on U.S. soil. Welcome to Mesa, Arizona, for the conclusion of night number two of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. Team Nutsara taking on Team Dela Cruz, a battle of international superstars. Hey, everybody, Kevin Barnett back again with Missy Whittemore. We are here in night number two. And Missy, the international players in this league are not only in the league, they're impactful. Yeah, in this match alone, we actually have three international Olympians. And both of these teams will be captained by international players who are returning to AU. So not only do we have a wealth of talent, but a wealth of experience. Just how good was Team Nutsari in their sweep in night number one on Friday night? Well, so good that they put themselves amongst the leaders in the leaderboard. Nutsara Tomcom feeding some capable outsides. Yeah, Nutsara may be a first time captain, but you certainly wouldn't know it. She has crafted a really nice team that includes the young but very dangerous Claire Chasse, who coming in tonight was only 15 points off the leaderboard top. And then I think one of the surprises of night, of night one was the performance of Nia Reed on the right side. She created a lot of balance for Team Nusara, who, as you would expect, got everyone involved offensively. But Dania De La Cruz, defending champion in this league, a hammer herself, but she wanted some balance mm -hmm. with her first draft pick, Willow Johnson. Yeah, and I'm telling you, that early draft pick is proving to be a very good one because Willow Johnson is solidifying her reemergence in this league. She had 15 kills last night. That is certainly going to draw some defensive tension away from De La Cruz and make this team even harder to defend. Yeah, 15 kills from Willow Johnson, sort of a reemergence for her, a force at the net. We'll chart and see if she can continue that. The lefty on the right. And this is how it all works. You said 44 the best athletes in the world. The scoring system, there's positives and negatives for your actions. More success to be had with your team winning. If you're amongst the top four, at the end of any one weekend, you get to draft a new team. We shuffle up and deal again on Tuesdays to come back on Friday, Sunday, and Monday with brand new teams. You never see the same combination twice. And at the end, we crown a champion. First serve of our second match. We have double headers every time is underway. There's a dig from Lindsay Vandewida in the back row. And immediately a block. Ali Bastianelli, top blocker last year in the league, picks up a stuff on point one. And one of the reasons why Team Nutsara is just so dangerous. Not only do they have firepower at the pins, we saw that in the open, but they have a lot of talent in the middle, offensively and defensively. That's Bethany De La Cruz on the right side this time, dug up by Team Nutsara. They're wearing the blue, Bethany De La Cruz in the black and gold. They are Team Gold because she is the top person. So the top person will wear gold each week. And the team names carry that of their captain. But Dani De La Cruz has been a captain more often than anyone else in Athletes Unlimited volleyball history. She remains amongst the leaders. And it's with diverse mm -hmm. shots and good decisions. Completely mixing it up there. Did you see Elisa Childress, though, going down to the floor and still hanging that high set behind? That is also going to be a little bit different look that we're going to see from Team De La Cruz is De La Cruz herself likes that high ball that she can go off hands of the blocker or you saw there with the off speed. Thrown overhead, but Donnie De La Cruz has seen that move before. Johnson is Doug coming back the other way. Both liberos doing some work. Willow missed just wide. What an interesting libero matchup here, too. Kendall White, first year in the league, playing on Team Nutsara. And on the other side, you just saw a dig from Novaris Velez Augusto, Betania De La Cruz's favorite pick. That's such a great story, her sidekick, playing with her in four of five weeks last season. And De La Cruz, a captain every week last season, so obviously choosing her friend time and time again. 
Score there for Lindsey Vandewaite. About 60% of your points should come from your team's success. About 36% for your individual stats. Those are pluses and minuses. We'll detail that for you as we go. And MVPs at the end, voted by the players, voted by our unlimited club members. They get a vote in that as well. And that will round out all of the points towards the championship. So you, the fan, have an opportunity to check in and be a part of this championship chase as Ari Cruz, their number 24 in blue, getting the start tonight. She played as a sub in night number one. Yes, she did, and she came in, and we talked about the international experience and the Olympians in this match. Ari Cruz is one of them, and it showed last night when this team was a little up and down, she really came in and steadied the ship. Ari Cruz, an Olympian, originally out of Bronx, New York, played for Puerto Rico, played at Florida. She says she has a couple more seasons in her, then she wants to be an assistant coach for Starting Academy. She's all in on the game. Okay. Chasse with the pass, delivery to the middle. No kill for McCage. And Saro with the dig inside of the block. Read again, right side. Oh, a little backslide underneath it is Nomaris. That is Dominican Republic to Thailand if you're scoring at home. <laughs> Nomaris, Puerto Rico. Vandewaita, United States. Cruz from Puerto Rico. 5-3, Team Rutsara. Really nice rally. Defense on display. Nutsara with the push to Cruz, who finishes down the line. Molly McCage in the front row alongside Cruz there with Nutsara in the right front. Front row setter, backslide. High over the top from Paris Watson. Paris Watson, a player that maybe wasn't on everyone's radar, but she made an impact on Friday. I would have to agree. Had six kills last night. And interestingly, for this team, they are down a middle after Ada Cunley was injured. She's not available the rest of the weekend, so it's Kayla Cathy and Karis Watson in the middle. Teams have three middles, so it'd be interesting if someone else has to take a moment who would be your emergency middle, kind of like the emergency quarterback in the sport of football. We mentioned the fact that Ari Cruz really settled the ship for Team Nutsara yesterday. I'll tell you what that looks like. That looks like hitting 560 from the left pin, which is exactly what Ari Cruz did. And already off to a hot start here. That ball hit off the defense and out of bounds. What a unique things about Athletes Unlimited Volleyball is that we do have an opportunity to catch up with players and people who are all around. And we just want to see how many Olympic medals and Olympic appearances we could come up with. Taiba Hanif Park and Danielle Scott, uh, is we're working on eight Olympic appearances between you guys, or am I shorting somebody one? No, I've got three. Danny's got the other five. Yeah, Danny has five. Danny, can you give some other people a chance? At well, the Olympics here? They're having an opportunity now and doing very well. I love that our women just qualified and before that won the gold. So everyone is uh, doing exactly what they should be doing at the time that they should be doing it. Yeah, still Jordan a fan. Larson and Taiba, you were a facilitator in this league a couple of years ago. Tell me about what you've seen with the level of play over the last couple nights. Man, it's been incredible. You guys were just talking about it. There is a wealth of addition in new players that are strong attackers, that are smart attackers. But the defense, the blocking is just so incredible. The level is really being raised with the level of defense that um, these young players are bringing to the game. Danny, with this league in its third season now, how about the legitimacy of an opportunity for players to play professional volleyball right here in the United States? What do you think about that? Well, it's definitely the time again. <laughs> the time is right again now. I mean, with everything that's happened with the 92,000 plus in Nebraska to the record breaking attendances that's been happening just for regular season, the talent is amazing um, here in the United States. And, you know, um, we've got two leagues that are going to be full season that's starting up. And so League One Volleyball has been intentional about the timing of when we're doing that post the Olympics and just really excited about everything that's happening in volleyball. Taiba, you were in the bubble with us back in 21. People may not know where you are now. What are you up to? How are you involved with the game? 
Yeah, so Danny mentioned that there are two additional leagues coming up with League One. Um, the other one is PBF, and so I have transitioned over to the head coach of the San Diego team, and we're currently putting everything together. We're building our roster. Uh, we've got 13 solid players right now and continuing to look our roster to have a fantastic season and make a championship run. What's your mascot? Oh, I would love to tell you, but we haven't released it to the press yet. Oh, I was hoping I would get it because I've been really impressed with the mascots thus far. I love it. It'll be something different. It's, a very, it's something subjective, so it's not something that I don't think is on the tip of anybody's tongue right now. And I know, Danny, you're doing some broadcasting, right? You're getting, you're going to sit behind the mic on the regular. What have you discovered about the game is different when you're in this chair? Yeah, you know, I am going to do a little bit of broadcasting. Um, different about the game. It's a little bit faster than when I played. Um, the, the athletes are definitely really physical. Um, so that's a difference that I'm seeing. Um, but the game is the game. And so um, love that it's growing. Love that, um, you know, there's positions for all type of athletes to have an opportunity to play, whether it's at different levels of NCAA or rather it's going on to finish um, with the, continue their career internationally. But really my main focus is with League One Volleyball, I am the head of the um, talent acquisition. So I get to do some recruiting. I get to work with our Athletes Council. I get to work with our wellness committee that's really focused on making sure we're taking care of like the um, mindset uh, and mental uh, game of our athletes, take care of concussion and all those things that are important for our athletes to be successful. What's brought you guys out to the league here, Taiba? What do you like about Athletes Unlimited and the uniqueness of the chase? Well, I think it brings in a different fan base. Not everybody truly understands the game, and I think you get to see a different aspect of it with the different point scoring, um, more opportunities for players to come in and just showcase their skills. Um, and so I think it, it brings a new element to the game. They have definitely upped the entertainment level and just the excitement you feel within the gym. I think that's something that we didn't really see in volleyball before. I really love that they have so many um, international players who are now here integrated within the league. Uh, the point system that they have, it's really unique as well. It's really fun to watch. All right, fantastic. Taiba Honey Park and Danielle Scott, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Olympians joining us. That's a lot of fun to have them in the building and yeah. see them talking to everybody and enjoying each other's company. Well, we mentioned the number of Olympians in this match, but maybe we need to take account of the number of Olympians in the building. I mean, I've got one next to me, so it's a pretty impressive count. Who's that? Um. Who's sitting in the booth now? <laughs> nobody, nobody remembers ancient history anymore, Missy Whittemore. <laughs> I think we've got ourselves our first challenge of the match. All right, 11-8, Team Dela Cruz and Newt Sara have been absolutely duking it out while we are catching up with two legends of the game. Five Olympic Games for Daniel Scott. Uh, just truly remarkable. Mm -hmm. And Batania Dela Cruz could be on the edge of another right. Olympic Games for her. She just helped her team qualify the Dominican Republic just last month. I'm curious to get a second look at this one because I do feel like when the line judges flinch, they pull their head away, that those calls are, are, can be missed, but actually, I think it's in. Yeah, that looks pretty, I don't he hung in there pretty good. Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, no, I'm just saying if I were the official, I think that flinching would make it really difficult for me to make the appropriate call because you jerk your head. I mean, obviously, but yeah, you're right, he hangs in there. You gotta nice keep, you job. You gotta keep looking downfield. That's impressive. Always look downfield, I'm even when you're you. scrambling, Missy, I'm, you I'm, know this. I'm, I'm not cut out to be a line judge at all. All right, that ball is going to be Bethany De La Cruz's point, and rightfully so, as that one is confirmed. That'll keep Bethany at the, at the line. How about the patch here on the right arm? Yeah, what, that is indicating in all gold, as it should, that she is our champion from a season ago, not to mention the runner-up of the first season of AU. I love what she made a great play on Friday night. One of her teammates just pointed at it for her. <laughs> yeah, this. Kind of like the scoreboard. That's Take a look nice. at the score. No, no, right here, right here. That is nice. On the right arm. If you want to join us here in Mesa, Arizona, and I know you do, you need to go get your tickets at auprosports.com slash tickets. An opportunity to join us here in person in Mesa. You want to be in around the athletes. We had an autograph session after the last match. Especially you have a club team, young players. Bring them out. Let them see the next level of play. That's so important. And one of the things that's been lacking in the United States for a long time, even for young, yeah. talented high school players, 
good college players. They never saw the pro level till they went to it, if they went to it after college, and they had a lot of work to do. Seeing great volleyball players was so impactful in my young career as a middle school and high school player, going to, at that time, for me to see what I thought were just, to me, they were the Olympians, you know? I went to college camps, and specifically, I was a huge fan of Coach John Dunning, who we all know from Stanford, but prior to that, coached at UOP, University of Pacific. I went to his summer camps, and to be around those players up close, boy, did that motivate me. Willow Johnson, did we mention that her reemergence in the league is for real? Our leaderboard will be updating live. Remember, this is an individual championship chase, and this is the live leaderboard. The reason you see so many purple numbers is mm. because that team, Team Edmund, had a sweep, a dominant sweep in our first match of the night, so their points are already in there. All of these players here will be continuing to rise throughout the evening on our points. Oh, back set again, and no. That's the second back set I've seen from Ali Bastianelli. I, I think she's been working on this in practice. <laughs> she's bound and determined to get herself a back set assist before it's all said and done tonight. There's a block move there. Karis Watson getting a hold of it along with Willa Johnson. Tough service. Another backslide. Johnson with the defense this time. Vandewada inside. And I had Lindsey Vandewada on my radar because he said if, if more offense is going to come from somewhere, it'll probably come from Lindsey Vandewada, who did not have a terrific start. Yeah, only five on kills on 24 attempts. And I think we all felt like that number would drastically rise. Yeah, she's more powerful than that. The Oregon Duck out of, originally out of Turlock, California. 15-10. Team Dela Cruz, they are the aggressor here in our first set of three. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. Welcome back to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. I'm Savannah Collins, and yesterday I had a chance to watch a little a bit of Team Nutsara's practice. And what I took away from that is, man, does this team take on the irresistible joy that their captain has. They started off practice playing a little bit of volley tennis, keeping things light and fun. But when you ask this team what it's like to play with Nutsara, they can't help but mention how happy she is. Molly McCage summed it up best. She says, I think that's why she's played so long, how happy she is. She's successful because the minute she touches the court, which is almost every day of her life, she's happy. And this whole team has taken on that joy that Nutsara brings to them. And she's got some fans here in the stands of the night. The Thai American Association of Arizona is here to in on Captain Nutsara. Nice. I've never thought of how well Thailand travels. We all know Brazil travels extremely well. Thailand trying to get in on that. I like it. Yeah, she's filled up the stands. Team Nutsara with the crowd. All right, Willow Johnson from the line. Looking at Cruz, overpass killed. 
What was that? Alicia Glass Childress right there? Absolutely. Yes. Childress and De La Cruz actually only played together in one week of last season, even though they're both returners to AU, but they look to be very comfortable together. Yeah, if you're the hitter, you go for your setter. That's what Betty did at the beginning of that draft. Andrew Lida with the dig. How about the big kill at the arm? No, that one's in the tape. And Vander White turns to Betty Dela Cruz and says, "So, if I can read her lips, it looked like she said, so perfect. I mean, beautiful second contact from Dela Cruz who can absolutely do it all. Here you go with Karis Watson on the back slide. He is a front row setter right now. All each class Childress along with Lindsay Vander White. Betty Dela Cruz, this is where you might serve her short and look to drop the ball in front of her. Interesting double sub taking place for Team Nutsara as she is putting Yasiana Presley, who played on the left side yesterday, in on the right side, and Nicole Edelman Cagliari in the back row. So a little bit of a 6 2 look as we will see the second setter. Right, and you asked, would a captain sub themselves out? Well, mm -hmm. rare is the case, but here we go. Watson, rejection. Cruz again runs into the block. Back row, layoff, no good. Now you wonder how many reps Nutsara has with Claire Chasse mm -hmm. on, say, a back big attack. And then you can go ahead and reduce that number to Nicole Edelman Cagliari. A look at Marin Grote, number 88. Took over Nutsara's number. She was 88 last year. Yossiana takes the air out of the gym. I love it. A rip down the line. First kill for number 22 here in the second match. Obviously looking for an offensive punch, and they get it. Yeah, the crowd's loving it. And speaking of the crowd, our star in the stands, Taylor Bruns Tegenra tonight, hanging out. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Uh, you appear to have made some friends uh, th from Thailand here. Yes, I've got some friends around me. They are Team Newt Sara, so I guess I am too, or else they might not let me sit with them. Is it weird at all that uh, a setter is a fan of another setter? No. Oh, my gosh. I've been a Newt Sara <laughs> fan for years. Kidding me? All right. What is it for you that makes you like Newt Sara? We've heard from a lot of the hitters, but you are a fellow setter. Uh, for me, uh, Nutsara is just one of the most creative setters in the game. Um, she uses her, her players so well. She just knows how to make everyone around her successful. So inspiring. So Taylor, as a returner to this league, just talk about how you've seen it change, you know, from season to season and what it's like to see it now established in its third year of existence. Yeah, um, I think that we've leveled up every year. Um, we started year one with a great group of girls, and then year two just got even better. And now, I mean, just from this first week of play, I can say that it's going to be a really fun season. Yeah, part of that leveling up has been attracting new talent. It's come from a lot of the top colleges. It's come from yes. seasoned professionals. And strangely enough, it's come from your uh, bridal party. <laughs> so... Uh, we know yes. that Karis Watson has gotten in, and now I'm wondering who is the most likely other member of your bridal party to join us? Hmm. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> I had a pretty tall bridal party, so I'm sure I could convince one of them to join. Okay. All right. Not naming any names. I don't know. Maybe don't. <laughs> maybe some tough choices there. <laughs> I right. mean, yeah. All right, we'll check back in with you later. Go, go find some friends that are going nuts and find out what they love about this league. Okay, All right. can do. Taylor Bruns Tegenrod, our star in the stands tonight here for match number two. Fun to get the players into our world mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. Say, let's, let's give you a mic, an IFB. We'll just send you out, see what you can find. I have Savannah Collins roaming around as well, although I see right now she's seated. I want to I wanna see her in a bench. I want Savannah in with the, with the gold team right now. Get in there with Team Dela Cruz and hang out. I think she's got her ear in the huddle. Yeah, just sidle up, you know, be a sidler. <laughs> no tic tacs in the pocket, just slide right in there. All right, Chasse, good pass, overhead. Yossiana, oh my goodness, she's fun to watch. Left pin, right pin, doesn't matter. And so the interesting choice of 
flipping to a 6-2. Looks like it pays off there for Team Nutsara. However, with the rotation, she'll be back in. Pays off for me, too. That ball hit into our broadcast location. As far as I'm concerned, it's this match. I'm going to take the ball and put You're it in my bag. Keeping that one? Yep, that one's mine. All so right. go find another. That one's mine. I'm making that match happen. Willow Johnson from the left-hand side. Boy, a lefty with talent on the left. That's something special. That really is something special. It's fun to have a left-handed swinger. It's a little bit rare. And a left-handed swinger with that much confidence from the left pin. I like it. Willow Johnson off to a much slower start, just two kills, but she's only had six attempts, so they haven't needed to go to her as much. Importantly, her team with a lead at 20 to 15. In our first set, Marin Gro, will she get in? Will her team win? Team Dela Cruz leading Team Nutsara 20 to 15. Team Nutsara undefeated in sets. We'll see if they can rally here in the first. Athletes Unlimited and Tops unveil the first ever set of player trading cards that feature all four Athletes Unlimited sports combined in one set. The 200 card set features 185 athletes. It's available at Target, Barnes and Noble, Hobby Shops, and through tops.com and fanatics.com. They're everywhere, so go get your set today. Let's check in with Savannah Collins. We encouraged her to get uh, embedded over there with Team Dela Cruz. I think she did it. Savannah. Well, something that Team Dela Cruz was focusing on after taking the loss on Friday was defense, defense, defense. It's what they did all day in practice yesterday. And they really wanted to focus on getting kills out of defense, being able to get that offensive production started there. So they saw a lot of serve and pass, but there was one thing they talked about in their huddles as a team. It's that Newt is gonna Newt. And what that means is you cannot fall prey to what she might do. No guessing, no predicting with her. You gotta look and go is the block and not get held up by her deception. That was what they were focused on. Kevin Missy, back to you. Yeah, Newt's gonna Newt and Betty's <laughs> gonna Betty. And that means heat from the service line. Yes, it does. And also trees for the planet. There you go, aspiration aces, 10 trees. Nice job, Betty. And defense, plus five for the dig. Vandewida off the block and out of bounds. Another point for Team Dela Cruz. Dig to transition, exactly what Savannah just talked about. Absolutely, a transition dig from the captain. If she wants it, she's gonna, she's gonna show them how to do it. If you haven't joined us before, this is huge. The lead that Team Dela Cruz has right now, more mm -hmm. important than in a normal volleyball match, we play on aggregate, so that's where we go long and we'll take some points away from Betty. We play on aggregate, we play three sets, no matter what, to 25 win by two, and we add them all up. And that is the aggregate score that determines the win or loss and 60 team points. 60 of the 180 total team points. And that is exactly why Team Nitsara needs a little run right here. They need to close that gap. Yeah, they're not getting any help mm -mm. at the net with the attack of Team Dela Cruz. Willow Johnson has picked it up. She's the kind of hitter who could be at zero in four attempts and then run off eight in a row. Yes. I've got Willow mic'd up. We'll see if we can air any of that later. 
One-hand set from Nutsara as Nutz is Nutzing over there, although that one a little more predictable. I'm not sure that she could do much else with it as it was about to travel over the net. Typically so unpredictable, and that is exactly what Savannah was alluding to, that if you try to look at her body and make a guess as to where she's going to set, good chance she's going to go opposite of that. She's very deceptive. Trickle ace for Ali Bastianelli. Ten trees, thanks to Ali. I like the double nickel. Mm hmm As our producer pointed out, a palindrome, always good as a number. 88, 77, 55. Back set, no, this time, front set. Right side, read stop for the moment. Go back to it, yes. Another good looking set, and a kill. Bastianelli, I think, is a setter in her in her next life. This is incredible. The middle blocker at a left back. You can, she she enjoys this. You can see it, and it's a really nice ball. Great angle there by Reed. What middle isn't I a know. setter in their mind? Exactly. They always stop and get in the way. That one's going to be long. And Team Delacruz will go to a set point, looking for 40 team points to add to their total. Every player receives plus 40 upon the victory of a set, and that will change the complexion of our leaderboard. Willow Johnson for the set, no. Second chance for Team Dela Cruz to close it. And remember, every point you get back matters in that aggregate total. You want to carry a lead into that third set and close it out before you have to get to the end of that set. That's right. And a wide, a good pass in rhythm to the outside, and that was right over the top of the song. And boy, were you right when you said you really felt like we would see a big response from Vander Weide today with bigger numbers. Absolutely, we're seeing that in the first set. But actually, this set has not concluded quite yet because we're getting a challenge here. Dude, sorry, I think, felt that that one touched the antenna. She looks pretty sure. Yes, as the EP official is pointing to the antenna, David Cruz asked what the challenge was. Give you a quick look at it here. It does look like the antenna moves. Yeah. I Very think, interesting. I think that's a good catch. I actually, in real time, thought maybe someone had hit the net because I did see that antenna move. And I thought, oh, is there a net violation there? All right. So it, it could be possible. And as you have pointed out, every point so incredibly important because right now, as the scoreboard stands, De La Cruz not just with the first set win, but with a five-point lead in the aggregate score, and that's a pretty big number. Right. If you put up five and put up another five, you're carrying that plus 10 in the last set. You have to have a pretty good collapse in that third in order to give back the overall. Now, we have seen it. So anytime we have a team that wins two mm -hmm. right up front, you don't want to tune out. We've had a multitude of teams come back, win that third set, and mm -hmm. take home a victory. Yeah, that it, looks it, like a touch. It really does move, yeah. I think we're going to get a reversal here, and I'm going to have to get some white out. Your card is going to be ugly. That's right. I wrote down 25-20 because that appeared to be the end, but it will not be. Everything about that swing looks really good, except for that micro touch. And the captain, who is right there at the pin, was very quick to go to the challenge. All right, so we're going to rewind it. We'll go to 24-21 mm -hmm. with the switching points there. And of course, that will have an effect on the scoreboard. What was a plus eight will become a minus eight, a 16-point swing for the score individually on the leaderboard of Lindsay Vanderweide. Pardon me, minus 12. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a 20-point swing. If it's plus 8 for a kill, it's minus 12 for an attack error. They go right back to her. And the dump to the charging near Reed. And I'll just have to change one number there. Efficient side out by Team Dela Cruz. And instead of a 5-point advantage, it is a 4-point advantage out of set number 1. They hand Team Nusara their first loss of the 2023 season, 25-21, and put 40 team points on the side of the women in black and gold. Team Nusara looking to rally in the second.
คุณมากค่ะอิฟเยอิมินแบ๊กเฮียยูเอสอัลลิเดบิดยายูเอสอัลลิเดบิดโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคจ้ามีใครอยู่อ่ะเด็กโอ้ทูทูอินอินเตอร์เนชั่นแนลทูเซ่That was our Air National Guard into the action with Nutsara Tom Com running the offense and now making some adjustments for the second set. No adjustments needed for our star in the stands, Taylor Burns Tegenrud. Uh, you found another friend. Yes, I found the lovely Nazi. What's Nadi doing everybody. in this dance? We're just we're just hanging out post match, just enjoying yeah. the flavor. Hanging out, you know, setters stick together. So. Oh, we always do. We always do. Really? What do setters do when no one's looking and setters can go off and do their own thing? What are you guys? Where what are you guys do going? setters do when no one's looking? Talk about our hitters. No. Just kidding. Ooh. Oh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Talk only good things about our hitters. How wonderful they are. Okay, hey, have, have either of you had a chance to explore the new city here? You, Dallas for two years with Athletes Unlimited season one, season two. What about now? You're in Phoenix. It's blazing hot outside this weekend. What have you guys gotten up to? Um, yes, the heat does make it hard to do some things outside, um, but it's so gorgeous here. I mean, as long as you can find a little shade, it's great sitting out uh, with a coffee and some friends. So we've really enjoyed uh uh, Phoenix so far. Taylor, I have to ask you because I'm a fellow Central Illinoisan like yourself. So from normal Illinois to Sweden, did you <laughs> ever think the sport of volleyball would take you that far? Never, and I never thought that I would love it enough to stay in Sweden either. Uh, it's very dark and cold, but mm -hmm. the Swedish people have warmed my, warmed my heart, so I stay. All right, what do you, Netty? What's your breakdown of this match thus far? First set, give it, give it to me from both of you. Yeah. What has gone on? What adjustments are needed? Play the role of coach here. All right, so me and Nazi, we're talking about the game. Um, what's gone on so far? I mean, Gold's just looking really strong. We saw they had 18 kills in that first set. Um, that's a crazy high number for a single set. They're just finding ways to put the ball away. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think their defense and their out-of-system hits are on point right now. Uh, Team Nutsara trying also. That's a great hit by y'all. Yeah. I mean, we. I fully expect Newt to, uh, yeah, I fully expect Nutsara's team to make a comeback here. Um, Nati, as being a captain, how are you feeling this first week? What's How's it been, the first week of eight? Um, I'm not feeling as strong, you know, but uh, you never give up and tomorrow we have another game and we're going to come back stronger and trying to figure it out as a team what we could do to win. All right, ask her if you could change one thing, what would it be? What problem would you solve if you could snap your fingers and be done with it? Okay, okay. Um, what is the one problem you would solve if you could just snap your fingers and, and it was fixed? Maybe um, it could be, it could either be the connection with my outside hitters or just getting my outside hitters in rhythm. That would be one thing. But I will say what she said, never give up. That is Natalia Valentin Anderson to a T. I will never give up. That's what we love about her. Thank you both. Enjoy the stands. Enjoy set two. Thank we'll check you. Back. All right. Star in the stands. Taylor Burns taking it. Off the block, out of bounds, Team Dela Cruz down 3-1, but it's early. Betania Dela Cruz, our 2022 champion, and maybe future Olympian again mm -hmm. with the Dominican Republic. If you don't know, the Dominican Republic on the women's side qualified, the USA women have qualified for Paris, and the USA men have just qualified as Luciana Presley has remained in the match here. Change up for Team Utsara. They have left her in place of Claire Chasse, so they're really moving the pin weapons around.
And Nutsara continues to Nutz as she goes right back to the right side. A really nice swing from Yasiana Presley. We saw her inserted into the match in a 6-2 situation where she played at the right pin in the first set. Now she's opposite Ari Cruz on the left side. Beautiful connection into the middle blocker. That is Caffey who collects the kill. Kayla Caffey, middle blocker out of Chicago, Illinois. Three schools, mm -hmm. Missouri, Nebraska, and Texas. Getting degrees along the way. Yes, she did. She is. A, she got her education degree. I know when she was playing at Missouri, she had to balance student teaching with volleyball practice. I can't even imagine how exhausting of a day that had to be. But she actually played college volleyball for seven years because of some injuries, medical red shirts. The collegiate record books are, at this point, utterly useless. Yes. Because you have five-year All-Americans, you have six-year players, <laughs> set people who were in programs for seven years. It's I should ridiculous. say she you played five years, was in college seven years. Right. I guess would be more right. appropriate. But yes. there were some people that played six crazy. years in some cases. Like, yeah. you have to get rid of the record book. Start over. Tear it up. Oh, Cafe! Not to be outdone with one hand, Childress with the delivery. Childress goes up and gets it. Pass looks tight. McCage jumps with Childress and Cappy all over this. Little loop pass and it's thrown deftly off the outside hand of the ball. It's exactly what Team Nutsara needs from Ari Cruz after a huge rip that could create a lot of momentum for Team De La Cruz. They just need someone to quiet that, and Ari Cruz is the one to do it. Comes right back with a really smart play. Ari Cruz is an international volleyball assassin. Mm -hmm. And that ball rolls cleanly over the top of the block. De La Cruz within one. And remember that match score you need to watch below. That is the aggregate score. We're gonna add up all three totals from our three sets we're going to play. And the overall score will take home 60 win points and the victory on the scoreboard for the team with the most points. We're going to 30 to 27, Bella Cruz. Presley looked like she's a little bit under that one, wanted a touch. You have a couple captain's challenges. Should you use them becomes the question. And Nutsara, who just wasn't sure about that one, looks to her bench and asks for some input. Do you think I should go to the challenge here? And shaking heads yes from that, from that vantage point, they think it's worth it. So I have a challenge looking for a touch at the net. Remember, you can join us for Athletes Unlimited Volleyball at these same times throughout the next four weeks. We will be back again tomorrow night. And then we'll be back for week two, three, four, and five, right into the beginning of November. 4 p.m. local and 7.30 p.m. local until the time doesn't change here. Mm -hmm. Then it'll be closer to the Eastern time zone. The Eastern time zone, it's always going to be 7 and 9.30 for your viewing across the ESPN family of networks. All right, Missy Whittemore, what do you say here? What have you seen on these replays? Touch or no touch? So far, I'm saying no touch. Haven't seen anything yet. I'm looking at the right-handed Karis Watson here. Oh, no. From that angle, the ball crosses completely over I, I, the other blocker. I can confirm that Yasiana Presley jumps high based off of this replay. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. An intensely physical player, wow. Yasiana Presley. So fun to watch. And what an arm. The arm talent is what impresses me mm -hmm. the most with Yasiana. Her ability to snap over the top of the ball remind me of a women's legend. Maria Luis out of mm -hmm. Cuba, the legendary Cuban teams of the early mid 90s. How fiery were those teams? Uh, they had to change the protocol because they got in a fight with the Brazilian team in the tunnel. Wow. Yeah, a full on fight. So then you were never allowed to come out of the same tunnel. You had to come out of opposite ends have you, or at have wildly you seen different any times. Have you that in your uh, past year at AU? Any brawling? Fighting in the tunnel? Yeah, brawling in we the have tunnel. yet to have a brawl in <laughs> AU, yeah. Molly McCage. Great story, Molly McCage, number five in blue. Three years ago, back in the league, gonna take a job with Gallo, I believe it was, three years ago, and 
playing volleyball. Then last year, director of operations for Pepperdine Volleyball, working with Marv Dunphy, one of her favorites, mm -hmm. and then working for Athletes Unlimited itself, moved to Chicago. Now, Molly McCage, as that ball is picked up by Ari Cruz, going back full-time player. That's great. The opportunities are here in the States right now. She's taking advantage of it. Indeed. She had offers to go to Germany after her first year in AU. Didn't go. Now she's back to play domestically full time. 8-6 point Team Nutsara. And also, a lot, of, a lot of accolades here. Made the Dream Team last year. Mm -hmm. Member of the Players Executive Committee, Molly McCage. Really, what a journey it's been. An awesome conversation if you get a chance to get an audience with Molly. Actually, the chair of the executive committee, so very involved in decisions that are made here in this player-run, player-impacted league. And she's getting it done at a high level as we take a look at our top four middle blockers coming into tonight. Yeah, super fun to break it down by position because realize middle blockers statistically don't have as quite as much opportunity to score points. So just to look at where you stand within your position and seeing Molly McCage right there at the top tells you how impactful she is. And those numbers coming into tonight, obviously, so we're going to see lots of movement on that board after these matches. We're going to see where it ends up. Danielle Hart made her case for top middle, mm -hmm. putting up a wall at the net in match number one, a record-setting 18 stuff blocks for her side, Team Edmund, as they now dominate the leaderboard via those blocks, via the three sets and the sweep of the overall. The cage redirect. Bastinelli, sorry, redirect up there. Someone with a five on their shirt. That's right. Yeah, the middles in five certainly jump out. When you take an initial look at this roster, you think, wow, this team could be really dangerous. And then pair that with a setter like Mutsara, who throws it over her shoulder and finds them all over the court. It becomes really dangerous. Now, I wonder, coming in, is this the team that's OP? As the kids say, overpowered. Is it the case? Well, I guess set one answers the question. No. No. No, because there is great balance in AU this year. So much talent to go in the draft each week that we are going to have good matches. Presley covered by Bastianelli. She get another shot at it and snaps it. That's what I'm talking about with the arm. Yeah. That's what we love to see. And Nutsara does such a nice job just making adjustments, putting her hitters in position to be successful. <laughs> Did you see Ellie Bastianelli just get a fistful of jersey and punch her in the chest? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the broadcast now. If you want to get more access to our league, there's a variety of ways to do it. You can join the Unlimited Club. You can come and join us here in person in Mesa, Arizona. You can buy some of the merch, the jerseys. You can become an you can get in and try and get the Unlimited Club Gold Box. It comes with a bobblehead of Morgan Hentz, which I'm sure if you threw something at that bobblehead, it would dig it. <laughs> Bastianelli cleans it up on top. Did she net? Dilla Cruz is going to point at it and say yes. Our referee, Young Park, is going to say no. I love the reaction of Newt Sara here. Everyone's talked about what a pleasure she is to play with. She was in position to pass that ball, but Bastianelli decided to go with the aggressive approach, take a big swing, and no one happier about it than Newt Sara. Oh, tough serve down the line. Perfect pass. Where do you go? Left side, over the top. Newt Sara's seen that before. Reed. Blocked by Caffey. Big step up tonight for Kayla Caffey, who is really showing how much she can contribute offensively and defensively. I've been really impressed with her play. Kayla Caffey said Tyler Hildebrandt was a huge influence on her career, and now head coach at Long Beach State. We mentioned the fact that she played at three different universities, and she actually said coming into AU, that she said, hey, I know how to adjust to a new team. That should help me as the cards are shuffled each week here at AU. I have played at three different schools. So even she was able to laugh about that. Little Johnson's going to pick up some points there. That's going to be plus 12 for her. That's a big one. You know, aces mm -hmm. plus 12, blocks plus 12, kill plus 8, dig plus 5. The big negatives are an attack error, a setting error, or a passing error.
Cruz through the block, and it's a winner. And last night, opponents went after Yasiana Presley and serve receive. So what does De La Cruz do? Really challenges her. And that, that was a nice pass by Yasiana Presley right there. Hey, no matter where you are, join the Unlimited Club. You can vote on game MVPs. You can enjoy virtual events, contribute to the player bonus pool, and more for just $20. You get so much more access, so much more fun to being a part of Athletes Unlimited. Go to au.prosports.com. And slash membership, you can join today. The crowd really get into it. Vandewaita blocked. That is a big block there. McCage next to Reed. Tough assignment for any outside hitter. And in the middle of that rally, I'm just I'm just taking time to enjoy some of the deliveries of Nutsara. It ends with a block, but she continues to give her hitters such good luck with her deceptive style of delivery. That one just through the block. Reed got enough of it. She'll get the ball right back. Glass Childress to Willow goes head hunting. That's right. Willow Johnson, uh, see the man at the cage. Select a <laughs> bear or maybe a Rasta banana, whichever you like for that wonderful <laughs> shot. Our middle is playing defense. Cruz again, perfect delivery. And realize these are one on one opportunities because of what Newt Sara is doing to stall the middle blocker. She's just making it so difficult to defend these pins. Willa Johnson is mic'd up tonight and she is absolutely annihilating balls once again. Welcome back to AU, Willa. Great blocks up there, great blocks. Really good setups. Red! Yes! Let's go! Alicia! Alicia, that was perfect. Inside. Yes! Yes, you can't tool me! Yeah, her arm swing is really weird. Loopier for her, so I'd say like one step longer, wait, and then really explode. But you guys are in a good spot. The lineups are really good. Everyone, really good blocking. Like, really good lineups. I'm glad it's been clarified for me that you can't tool Willow Johnson. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's official now. It can't be done. Don't try against the number 44. <laughs> Willow Johnson, you might recognize someone from Arizona with the last name Johnson with 44 on the jersey. Now, here's a quick quiz question for everyone at home. Randy Johnson, where did he start his career? I don't know. Where did he start? I'm going to leave that one out there for a couple minutes. Everyone at home, come up with your answers. Everyone, go to your supercomputers. 
Now, there's a couple different answers to this, and it may depend on where you think of him being. So for me, I think of him as a Mariner. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He's with the Mariners for a long time, but in technical terms, he started with the Nationals. Really? Yep, went from the Nationals to the Mariners to the Nationals. Back to the Mariners for a long time. Astros, <laughs> Diamondbacks. I definitely would have guessed Mariners. Yankees, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Trivia with Kevin Barnett. Yeah. And and later we could do it with Willow going from Team Dela Cruz to perhaps her own team if she becomes a captain in this next week as the top four players at any one week finishing top four in the points will make you a captain. Those kinds of plays could have us going. Yes. Team Johnson. The result of swings like that would certainly be landing on the top four of the leaderboard. But I'd like to pitch Willow right now. She's a captain. Mm-hmm. I would like it to be Team Willow, like Team Nutsara. Yeah, go first name. Nutsara Tomcom. Can we go Team Willow, please? Okay. All right. We're just going to have to dial in the serve. That's a number of service errors now yeah. from Willow Johnson. And interesting, she was obviously going short serve. She doesn't strike that ball very hard at all. I've seen a little bit of that tonight. I don't remember seeing much of it last night. And tonight, several teams trying to go short serve. All right, Team Dela Cruz trying to crawl back in. Team Nusara having a much better second set. And so we thought it was time to maybe talk to a middling child actress in this one as we bring in Marin Grote. Hi, Marin. Hey. Now, you, you said in your bio that you were a small-time child actress here on iCarly, and you told me this morning that you were also in a couple horror films. How and does this happen? Um, I just, I grew up in Burbank, California. It's right where the industry is for acting and everyone in the area does it. So my mom thought, why not? My kids are cute. Let's throw them out there. And it worked out well for a little bit until I got really tall and then it didn't work so much. Yeah. Acting kind of the land of midgets. Yeah. Small. Indeed. Indeed it is. Short folks. Yeah. Marin, are you a fan of horror movies? Actually, I think they're funny. I don't get scared. I laugh. And so, like, my fiancé, he's freaking out, covering his eyes, and I'm over here giggling at the scary monsters. <laughs> I also noticed that you now, though, say that you really enjoy, when you're not playing volleyball, doing some cooking, and particularly trying new recipes. So what's been the latest for Marin Grode in the kitchen? Any new recipes you would recommend? I'm taking on the challenge of braised short ribs, uh, but I'm doing the whole, like, eight-hour process. I just got a brand-new Dutch oven, and so I've seasoned it, and I've got my recipe, and I can't wait to try it on a grill. Okay, so this isn't just like a small hobby. You're really into this. I'm impressed. I, yeah, I, I love making myself good meals that are nutritious for the court, but also that are tasty. And so why not? And I love the challenge, so why not go for it? Now, being in Arizona for a lot of players is experiencing someplace new. For you, you had your bridal shower here yesterday. Who was a part of that? Uh, my fiance's family is from here, actually, and so all of his family came over last night to his grandparents' house. I went there, and we had a little bridal shower. It was really sweet and intimate, and I loved it. That's fantastic. Now, you played professional volleyball overseas as well. You had an experience in Turkey that maybe didn't go as well as you would have liked. This might be a little bit better. In what way? Uh, this is infinitely better. Uh, not only do I speak the language and they pay on time, but the girls are friendly. In Turkey, the girls, like, I wasn't Turkish, and so they didn't even try to get to know me. And when I would reach out to them, they still, they would just ignore me. Here, the older girls, the younger girls, anyone. I can talk to anyone. I can go get coffee with anyone. It is just so inclusive here, and it's incredible. So, Miran, do you have your sights set on more professional volleyball here in the United States um, when AU's not in season? Definitely. I'm looking to join any league in the U.S. I'm actually a part of PVF later in the season next year, and I, I hope it works out because I'd much rather stay here than have another experience like Turkey. All right, Mary, before we let you go, what's your go-to coffee order? An iced vanilla latte. All right. There we go. We have the, scout, the full scouting report mm -hmm. on you now. Thanks, Marin. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, Marin Grote, another, well, state of Washington player. With UW there. Yeah. Played until 22, had that brief overseas experience, and now here embarking on the pro career. Young talent shining, and yet different players from night to night, as we saw such a huge night from Claire Chasse last night. And Yasiana Presley has really, really settled in here this evening with a big performance. The team hitting percentage, certainly in favor of Team Dela Cruz here. But the scoreboard here in the second set, 
saying otherwise for Team Lutsara. It's close. Mm -hmm. A four-point lead carried by Team Dela Cruz via a 25-21 victory in the first. So Team Nutsara trying to cut into that. They still trail by three. Keep your eye on that match score below. Already given 40 points to Team Dela Cruz for their set win. Boy, Johnson on the right side again, terminal. That is 10 kills. Pardon me, seven kills for her, nine kills for Bethany De La Cruz. You had touched on the balance that was needed and where offense might come from, seven from Vandewijde. It is right now the women in black and gold who have that balance. Presley blocked. Kathy again with a stuff. 2019 De La Cruz, and that will be a timeout. Timeout, Team Nutsara. We want you to know that for every ace during this year's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball season, Aspiration is committed to planting 10 trees. Bethania De La Cruz has already planted someone in this one. Stay tuned throughout the season to see how many trees in total will be planted thanks to Aspiration's support. No word yet on whether you can request those trees. If you're the player who got the ace, <laughs> we'll have to see. Team De La Cruz up 20 to 19 gives us a chance to check in with Savannah Collins. Okay, Kevin, Missy, I'm gonna leave breaking this down to you, but the notes from set one going into set two for Team Nutsara really started with Yasiana Presley and some changes they made to her in the rotation. So they had her as the double sub in the first set and they wanted to utilize her as the true opposite, staying in the 5-1. And I know most, a lot, a couple of times you said, wow, great serve, oh, great attack. That is intentional. They really shifted their focus on their serve to try and get gold out of rhythm because they were excelling in the serve pass. It's what they practice, so it paid off. They are trying to keep this gold team out of system. Now, talking volleyball and breaking that down, I'm leaving that up to you two. All right. I like the service game focus. That was one of the notes coming out mm -hmm. of the first night. Seven errors for just two aces. Yeah. For Team Nutsara. Yeah, it was maybe the only chink in their armor from night one. They played so incredibly well, but yeah, we felt like they could be better from the service line. Right now, I think the challenge is not just putting balls in play, though, but putting difficult balls on Team De La Cruz is they do look like they have the upper hand in terms of the serve pass game, kind of nailing passes and staying in system pretty easily, I feel like. Yeah, speaking of difficult balls to handle in the back row, a lot of those are coming off the right hand of Yassiana Presley, who mm -hmm. started the match at outside hitter on Friday. Today has come back in in that role number 22. And yes, going back to what Savannah was referring to, came in on the right side in set one, but now they have switched her opposite Ari Cruz as a six rotation outside here in the second set. Realize even as a six rotation outside in serve receive, they're not afraid to set her at the right pin, even have considered, even have used her at the right pin primarily at, at points during the match. So Yosiana Presley, I, I really was excited about many of the young players in the league, her included, because of their skills. Claire mm -hmm. Chasse, Yasiana Presley, an opportunity to see somebody like Lindsay Vandewida, who hasn't haven't seen in a while, and see where they are. But there, there's so much talent and outside hitter. It's really been upgraded. And what an incredible opportunity for someone like Presley to be playing alongside a veteran like Ari Cruz and the experience that she brings to the game. Her knowledge of the game of volleyball, I think only you know, benefits a young player like Presley to be in practice and in a match and just garner from her the details, really. That ball is missed. So Caffey has that one passed by her right and her left hand. <laughs> Team Newt Sorrow right back. Blasted through the block. Johnson has proven her capability on both pins. Only left-handed player in this one. And it's been a challenge for this Team Nutsara block. Not a lot of success against Willow Johnson. This one right past Kathy and right through the block. 21 apiece. Willow Johnson hitting 350. Yes, Betty. Hitting some heat. Good touch. Mm -hmm. Nia Reed hanging in there. Cruz 
Tough play, and she's up to the task again. That's exactly what I'm talking about. For these players like Presley and Claire Chasse to see the decisions that Ari Cruz makes in really difficult moments. This ball looks like maybe it's a little tight and hard to handle. Willow Johnson right there, and Cruz coming up with the win. Johnson. Wow. I'll tell you what, she has more pop, more speed on that left arm than she had two years ago. More consistent. Yeah, uh, right away we noticed in the draft this season that De La Cruz went for a setter, as you would expect, early on. There were two setters who were captains this year, which was a first. So a smaller pool of setters took a setter and then turns around and took Willow Johnson with that second pick. And it was sort of interesting, but boy, does it make a lot of sense when you see them on the floor at the pins together. Aaron Fares into serve, veteran of AU, third year. Dig by Betty. Childress just scoops it <laughs> casually perfect. <laughs> Ari will get a second shot here. Through the block and down. Ari Cruz continues to find a way. This ball high and behind her. How does she kill that? Our next game coming up, 7 Eastern on ESPNU. This will be tomorrow. Team Edmund taking on Team New Sara, a showdown of young arm talent in that one. Allie Linehan, Claire Chasse, Luciana Presley all going to be present. And that will be another point here for Team New Sara. Critical. They have run up to a set point here, looking for plus 40 and a split heading in to our third set. Look at our total overall score, Nutsara down two. They're looking mm -hmm. to close one, but not before a timeout from Team Dela Cruz. Really nice serve moments ago from Reed. That was a point of emphasis that Savannah gave us listening in on Nutsara's huddle. They felt like they could be better from the service line, and Reed certainly doing that. Everyone loves to rep Athletes Unlimited, and you can do it too. Be sure and check out all the new volleyball merch, including the first ever Athletes Unlimited official replica jerseys. Go to shop.auprosports.com to get yours today, or better yet, show up here in Mesa, Arizona, and buy your merch in person, put it on, cheer for the team, and be a part of Athletes Unlimited. 24-22, Team Newt Sara with a critically timed micro run of two points. Yes. I tell you, the way this pairing has gone, two points feels like a pretty big run. I mean, we have been back and forth, a really steady battle here. We already went into the action with Willow Johnson. We're going to a little more from Willow, who's having herself another fantastic night. Yeah, Willow, it was not a one-night wonder by any means. Willow is backing it up with really, really good action. I think we're doing really good at siding out right away. Like, we're, we need to keep that. We need to keep that. On the block, well, you should be up, unless it's like a free ball or like a down ball. But if it's not, if you're not in a good position to block, don't block. Just come off, get the shots. For pins. Yeah, pins. Pins. Good job. Let's Kayla, go. Kayla, every time I think you can drop this hand. Okay. But good keep, keep your left hand strong, but I think you can drop this one. Okay. Just like that. It was so good. Okay. Nine of 18, one error, been blocked one time. Efficiency of 390 for Willow Johnson. You're going to pile in on top of that a two block performance and two dig performance. So, piling up some points is number 44. Golden, like her number. Yes. And boy, would it be fun to see an opposite as a captain. I, I want to see I want to see all the positions in on the captains this, this year. That would be a lot of fun. Karstalo, the opposite, spent the most time as captain mm -hmm. in league history. Johnson, this time forced to tip, picked up expertly by White. And then missed by Reed. Well, that was a chance right there to close it. Instead, De La Cruz to 24-23. So look at the front row. Nutsara is going to check back in. They had some blocking help there that time from Nicole Edelman Cagliari. McCage and Auri Cruz. Front row.
Cruz cross court dug up. Nomaris with the dig. Van der Weide going for the tip, no good. Push to the net, dump, no. Back row, Presley stuffed, and we're tied. Hard ball for Presley to get to. She's having to fall to her left to take a swing at that. This new Mar, this new star bump set right here is amazingly good as she sends it across court. And then another bump set. And not quite there for did you Presley. Did you see who was in the middle? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alicia Glass Childers stuck in the middle makes the block. I love it. Cruz, high hands. Namaris, what a run. And Dewida, did that go down? It's going to be called down. I think we're going to get a challenge. And immediately we do. It looked like she might have stabbed this one. Yosiana Presley, from that angle, I've got it up. I think it's up, yeah. And by the behavior of the ball. Right, right, I agree. The I think spin, she's under that. The bounce. I think it's just an inadvertent whistle. If that's the case, obviously the point will be rewarded, and we'll just have a replay here. So back to, to 24 all. And moments ago, it just felt like Team Nutsara was about to close this out. But wow. Team De La Cruz playing with a little fire tonight. I don't think they like the results of last night. No. I would put together the two views I've seen here so far. The front view looked like it might have been a half and half, but then when you look at it from the other angle, it looks like her hand is completely under it. She, she's got some tape on her fingers, yeah. which makes it a little difficult to see, but I, I still think she's under it. Is it enough mm. for an overturn? That's that is the question. That's where my mind goes. Yeah. See critical point right now. It's Dela Cruz with the advantage. Whoever wins this point is going to be mm -hmm. faced with the opportunity to close the second set, take home 40 win points for the set, and of course that overall closely watched as it is right now, 50-45, a five-point lead. And if Team Dela Cruz were to win this, you'd end up with a six-point lead headed into set number three. We play three sets no matter what. We play the 25, win by two, and we add them all up for the aggregate score for the overall victory. Kevin Barnett alongside Missy Whittemore, weekend number one, and day two of three. And we're gonna get a replay. That ball judged to be up. So we're still at 24. Johnson hit a tough one last time. Another good one. Cruz off the block. Johnson with the defense. Van der Weide, they're really early. McCage avoids going under. Cruz down the line, dug by Johnson again. Two digs in this rally. And the put away from the captain and champion. The Johnson defense, incredible on the right side. The huge scoop on the off speed and then plants her foot on that right line and digs the rip of Ari Cruz. Give it to Betty. They faced a 24-22 deficit called the timeout. Team Dela Cruz the chance to steal the set. Lamaris another dig. That ball is gonna go too far. And Namaris Velez Augusto Turns out to be the difference maker at the end of set two. Wow, 40 points that I really thought looked like they were in the bank for Team Nutsara and the fight that we are seeing tonight from Team De La Cruz. They, they weren't happy with the way things ended up last night. They, they don't like getting beat. Our champ wants to remain on top. So Team De La Cruz and our 2022 champion, our reigning queen, has an opportunity to come up with a sweep in her second match. They did it in thrilling comeback fashion, 26-24, and they lead now by six, heading in to our final stanza.
This is what we've always dreamed of. A place to compete, where we're seen and heard. This moment right here, can nobody take this from me? A platform to be unapologetically ourselves and celebrated for it. We are the future. The space to be loud, where we are resilient, ruthless, radiant. Athletes Unlimited defies all expectations. And only we know the determination it takes to get here. This is where champions are forged. No more asking, explaining, or justifying what we do. Get ready, because this is our moment. Redefining how sports championships work and taking women's sports where they've never been before has been Athletes Unlimited, and that is true in the sport of volleyball. 44 select world-class players on four teams with that individual scoring system to lead to the individual championship. Top four point leaders each week. The top four on the standings, they are the captains. That's it. They're going to draft on Tuesday. They're going to pick their team, and they're going to go to war with them on Friday, Sunday, and Monday. You play three matches. You score points as a team. You score points as an individual. Team success tantamount to your own personal success and your finish in the standings at the end of the year. Yes, it is, and that is why those 40 points that Team De La Cruz just came back and stole away from Team Nutsara are so, so important. Now we had match three. That was earlier tonight, and these are the MVPs coming out of that one. It was a sweep for Team Edmund. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by this at all, although you could have put Danielle Hart at number one. That was arguable. Yes. A fine performance by all three of these women. Leah Edmond repeating as an MVP. She was MVP three a night ago, now MVP one. And then that Badger connection. We think of them as the offensive connection, but they paired up on some blocks tonight that really defined Team Edmond. Their defense at the net just suffocated their opponent. 20. Eight. That is 28% or 280, depending upon how you think about it, mm -hmm. for the efficiency of Leah Edmond, but more importantly, the sweep for her side, tons of points, and lots of players in purple jerseys at the top of the leaderboard. Trying to unseat them, though, would be Team Dela Cruz. If they can sweep, we will have had three sweeps already in week number one of play. Oh, a high heater from Chasse, who's back in. That's Louisville on Oregon crime right there and chipped off another duck. Absolutely. I tell you, at AU, you get a shuffle of players each week. But if you play for a new star, you get a shuffle of players each set as they continue to search for answers. Why not? You know, they haven't found success. They continue to try new things. Claire Chasse back at it. And you have Ari Cruz and Presley all on the floor. So they're using Presley on the right side in this set. Cruz opposite Chasse. They have options, and mind you, every one of those decisions is made by Nutsara Tomcom. She has the call. Yes, she does. Nutsara. A lot to think about as a captain. A lot. And for some players, that's been trouble. Mm -hmm. Betty leaves it a little short. Vandewada chips it. Presley coming back, throws. Childress was waiting. That was patient defense. Betty blocked Josiana with the left hand. Yeah, looking at that particular rotation, to see Chasse and Presley on the pins together up there is pretty exciting and something the new Tsar has got to enjoy, being able to dish to either side. I wonder if Chasse was warm. Well, that first swing and then that serve, I'll tell you, yeah. Yeah. And there's nearly a dig, not quite enough space for Presley to run that one down for a second contact. Two apiece as some of the women in blue jerseys start to filter in. Mm -hmm. And Dela Cruz, Bethania climbing again. And the serve. Number and Dela. 31, Excuse Gabby Blossom. Me. De La Cruz's ability to stay atop the leaderboard even last night when her team only won one set, only 40 win points, and yet there she is in the top 10 on the leaderboard. It just tells you all you need to know about her. She was kind of middling in efficiency in the offensive side of the game 
midway through the, the match, and then I looked at her final stats. So, oh, she really picked that part up, and she's always playing defense. She's getting assists. She's serving some aces. She's picking up points in a lot of different ways. And very similar to our 2021 champion, Jordan Larson, doing it efficiently. Willow down the line, pulls the string. Feels like Willow Johnson is swinging at an empty net the way she is attacking the ball right now. It's dangerous for Team Nutsara because, because her confidence is only growing. Ari Cruz just leaving her too much line there. Tough serve. That's the one Johnson's been looking for. Presley elevates. A special athlete. Yeah, and she looks really good swinging from that right pin. And this will be something that captains will need to consider in future drafts because it was on Nutsara's radar early that she might want to use Presley from the right side. Then she felt like she had to get Nia Reed involved on the right side, so chose to use Presley on the left side. Now has gone back to the right side. So will captains in the future perhaps draft her as an opposite? I like Alicia Childers exploiting that matchup. Vander Weide yeah. at six foot two over Nutsara Tomcom at five foot seven. That's just classic volleyball matchups. That ball's too long. Like Kendall White was awfully close to that ball with her left arm. What you brought the chocolate last time? Yeah. With marshmallows today? Yeah, marshmallows. Okay. Yeah, we have campfire, classic campfire defense. But you know, Betty, I mean, she, she's so aware of her placement, not short into the campfire. We're actually kind of expecting it, and the defense is collapsing. Just, just a step over that and finding the hole. So remember what's at stake here in this third set. There are still 100 team points to be had, mm -hmm. and still the overall to be had was a six-point lead coming in. So if Team Nutsara can hold Team Delacruz well under 20, they will win. Such an interesting turn of events. It was Team Nutsara last night with the complete sweep, earning all the win points, walking away with people all over the top of the leaderboard. And the question kind of felt like, well, can they be beat? And now here they are on the opposite side of things, saying, trying to avoid the sweep themselves. All right, remember, it was Team Delacruz that suffered a loss as Betty is dug by White. Johnson, oh, she's undiggable at times now. Forget it. Liking the line right now, by the way. And that just that just makes proves the point that Alicia Childress is delivering such a killable ball. Look at that. All the way out to the antenna. That ball isn't set perfectly. Johnson doesn't have the opportunity to swing line. I'm gonna make a highlight film of Willow Johnson from this match. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a long one. You can settle <laughs> in and enjoy. Her and Leah Edmond have really gotten a hold of some shots today. Yeah. Leah Edmond in our first match had a, a number of high-powered efforts. Going to see some changes in the leaderboard after last night when Team De La Cruz, as we said, just didn't rack up enough win points to really have a presence on the leaderboard. 77-73, Team Edmund with the victory over De La Cruz. Bastianelli combined with Presley. Fives and twos. Two pair for the win there. Johnson again, they're not afraid to set her anywhere. And this team that looked a little shaky last night, we talked coming into this match about the international flavor and you've got Nomaris and Betty De La Cruz and boy, the experience is really what stands out right now. I think in order, in order maybe to knock De La Cruz off your game, somebody's gonna have to draft Nomaris high just to take her sidekick away and maybe make her a little uncomfortable. Now a block from Johnson. 
Well, Willow Johnson making a strong argument for a potential captainship if he's going to continue this level of play. And certainly after this match, making a run at MVP points. And some Flojo style. Yes. That's an old reference for you kids. Look it up. <laughs> Florence Griffith Joyner. Another tough serve. Betty loves that line. Where do you go? How about this time to Willow? Right side, Chasse. Through the block with some power of her own. 9-9, nine, nine, set number three, 60-54, Team Dela Cruz leading. And so we'll bring someone in, a familiar face if you love this league. Hi, Erin Fares. Hi. Erin Fares now in her third season out of Houston, Texas. We're a little bit further from your home. You've had an opportunity to be involved with a third group of women. What have you discovered is different, or how is your role different with this really oh. young group? Yeah, I think that, you know, recruiting-wise, since I'm on the PC, we, we really were um, kind of, like, picked really good people and ob obviously players, too. So, um, I mean, these players are fiery. They're new, but also coming out of their show very quickly. So I'm happy with the group. I feel like every year it's gotten better. Erin, you mentioned the PEC, that being the Player Executive Committee, of which you are a member. What's been your favorite thing about being a part of that group? Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, the, the PEC this year is just, I mean, all five of us are amazing and we, we share different thoughts on things and it's nice to hear a different perspective. Um, but also, I think just recruiting wise and just seeing those players that maybe they might not be at a top 25 school and between us five, you know, we know almost there's, it's, it's very rare that we don't know somebody that's emailing us or that we're recruiting. So um, I think that part is really fun to really connect the pieces we need here at AU. If you could go back and talk to Erin Fares of three years ago, what would you tell her about this? <sighs> or about life? Uh, just keep on pushing. I mean, I mean, it's everybody here has been All-American. Everybody has, you know, been the star of their team. So, you know, from year to year it changes, but just to stay positive and be ready when, you're, when you get your shot to take it. We heard you did a lot of defense yesterday, that that was the focus. Yeah, for sure. I think that was the difference in our um, our first game um, and a couple points here and there of just us being um, just ready on defense and also, like, sticking to a game plan. So we definitely went over that, and um, our, de our defense looks much better today. Well, Aaron, I know you're pretty busy right now. This time of year, you got your hands full here at AU, but I read that you do like to watch Netflix if you're able to come up <sighs> with some downtime. So do you have any Netflix recommendations for us? What's on your watch list oh right now? Oh, my God. There's just so many things. So right now I'm watching Love is Blind because another season just came out. Um, but listen, you know, Kevin knows I have a long list. Yes. <laughs> I probably still have a copy of it somewhere. Yeah, it's literally like 50 plus shows. If anybody's like, this is good, I just write it down. And as soon as I finish something, I open the next one. All right. The best show on TV right now is Team Dela Cruz versus Team Nude Sorrow. We're going to let you go exactly. and enjoy the Willow Johnson show. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron Fares. Willow Johnson, a rare miss now. Mm -hmm. Team Nude Sorrow, a two-point advantage. Only thing that can slow Willow Johnson down right now is the antenna. She hits that one into the antenna right here in front of us. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but it's very <laughs> consistent. It is consistent. A little inspection of the floor here. We're going to make sure everything with the floor is copacetic. I mentioned the fact that Aaron Fares has really grown with this league and into a new role, and that's part of the special things to see is how players change over time and get experience outside of the sport, out of, outside of being a new collegiate athlete. You might find yourself on the player executive committee. It was interesting to hear Aaron mention the recruiting aspect of that and how committed this group is to finding new talent for the league, and boy, have they done a great job this season. You know, player executive committee responsible for every choice that this league makes. It all runs right up to the players. Some leagues talk about how they have player influence. This is the league that really does have mm -hmm. player control. Get more access no matter where you are by joining the Unlimited Club. You have control of that. You can go ahead and vote on game MVPs, enjoy virtual events, and you can contribute to the player bonus pool with your membership, plus more for just $20. Sign up now at AUProsports.com slash membership. And 
be a part of this in a whole new way. We've got a little delay here is not sweat on the court, but I think actually some blood on the court that they're going to have to clean up before we can continue play. Yeah, they'll get that taken care of quickly, I'm sure. Give us a chance to look at Team Nutsara and Team Dela Cruz. Right now, kind of an offensive show from Team Dela Cruz. They're hitting 330 as a group. Willow Johnson, in spite of that last error, look, she's 14 of 25, hitting 440. And she's had the in-rhythm attacks, but she's also killed a whole bunch of balls out of system, point scoring, tough chances. She's playing with some impeccable conf confidence. She's been blocked once. I, I think that will uh, tend to, to pad your confidence. So the question is, if you're an outside hitter who's a captain going into next week, do you choose an opposite first? It, it starts to depend on the relative value mm. of the position. Mm. Like right now, how many good setters are there in the league? Probably a lot more. That ball is killed. So yeah, maybe you look at it and go, I need a good opposite. Willow Johnson is on right. fire. Are there enough good setters for me to pass on a setter and know that there'll still be a good one next right. time I choose? Right. Yeah, great question. Yeah, there's a lot of interplay when it comes to that draft. It happens on Tuesday, so you want to check back midweek and look at the combinations and start to think about who made good decisions, who made bad decisions, what team you think has the potential to dominate or even sweep. I think it's interesting to me that the outside hitting your position is definitely stronger in 2023. Mm -hmm. Molly McCage was a top middle blocker at eighth, and I wonder why a middle blocker was at eighth, and I, I thought, well, there's less middle attacks and fewer blocks to be had, which is kind of a double whammy when right. the outsides are better because they get set more often and they get blocked less. Right. And then Team Edmund sort of blew all that up in the first match we had tonight with 18 blocks. Yes. I mean, I think it's interesting the way that the draft snakes. I think ideally I really want to be the fourth highest ranked captain so that I get picks four and five. Oh, you want two? Yeah, I want two picks. You're going to trade down. Absolutely. Maybe you can trade down. I mean, maybe I'm just going to look at the points and maybe make an error on purpose to fall into fourth. All right. A lot of strategy that can be possibly deployed. Team Delacruz is looking for a little change in strategy if they're going to come back and sweep. They trail right now by three. Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. One action everyone can take for climate urgency is to to listen. There are just there are so many issues that you know have been prevalent and they're kind of in our face right now. But I think the world just needs to listen. At the Green Sports Alliance Summit this past year, I got to speak about Athletes Unlimited and how it's different from any other sporting league. It's um, it's player led. We are earth conscious. The amount of people that came up to me during the summit of like, oh, I didn't realize that athletes even cared about these kind of things. It was a really special moment to not only speak about it, but then learn from other people in the industry. Molly McCage letting her playing do the talking right now. Five kills on 11 swings, hitting 360. Terrific numbers. 
but I think there's a middle on her team with mm. even better numbers, including two fives on her jersey. Yeah, these two middles paired together make for a really uh, dangerous duo because As Ali Bastianelli right now has nine kills on 11 swings with just one error. That's good enough for a 730 hitting efficiency. And I think they would both be quick to tell you that playing with Newt Zara is a lot of fun as a middle because she is not afraid to get the balls to her middles in very creative ways. And that's why she chose two really good offensive middles because she knows how involved she can get them in the offense. Savannah Collins, excellent work. There she is talking to Bastinelli right now. She's in the huddle with Team Newt Zara. All right, we're back to action here. Overpass, Chasse sends it deep. Smartly done, lead is now four. And this is where you gotta start following the story of the set and the story of the match. Yes. Team New Star, there's 100 points left. They are plus four for the 40 points for the set. They are within two of the match. 63-61, dig by White. He's owning that angle. Chasse off the edge. Within one, 63-62. A big celebration there from Team Nutsara as they're starting to feel it a little bit. And boy, do they need those 60 aggregate points after dropping the first two sets. Leaderboard's going to continue to fluctuate, but so many points on the line now. Oh, Ari Cruz. And those, that's the one you know the moment you contact it. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you saw Ari go to her knees. They realize right now how important every point is. It's not just this third set that's on the line. They are taking a look at the match score here. Back row, Presley, a lot of trust there from the setter. Savannah Collins, we saw her moments ago, 18-13, Team Nutsara on a tear. Savannah, what did you find out? Sure, just wanted to pick Ali Bastianelli's brain a little bit about why her and Molly McCage are so effective as a pair. She said, we complement each other really well. You're going to continue to see that slide from Molly. She said, I love to stay in front. And then I asked her set after set, it looks like her connection with Nutsara is getting better. And she said it does feel that way. She said they played together in the scrimmage week, and now she feels like this is more of their week two as a setter middle pair versus only game two of their season. So that's why you're seeing them continue to click, and you're showing up in the stat line too. An emphasis on developing relationships even before the season begins are important to success. Amanda Wyda can't handle that off. Bastianelli continues. She's now in double figures, 10 of 12. And to Savannah's point, that's Bastianelli in front of the setter, something that she really likes to do. And Nutsara finding her quite well. Again, Nutsara has drawn within one in terms of the match aggregate score here as they lead by five. 65-64 on your screen. De La Cruz clinging to a one-point lead. That ball is going to successfully be killed. Now it's 19-15, so Dele, Team Dela Cruz hanging on to that two points. The last swing by Willow Johnson, Team Nutsara also slowed down. The block got a piece of it, it still rolled to the floor. This time the block again gets a piece of it, it travels out of bounds. So they're trying to figure out the arm of Willow Johnson. Bet he loves to serve the line. Chasse gets it right back. Oh. And we have contact with the net and that may not be that it hit the antenna right it may just be the net shaking enough to dislodge the antenna sometimes they come loose over time because earlier in this match there was a call that an attack actually did hit the antenna so you would expect that it was loose at, became loose at that time yeah they just tightened it back up you see that little clasp at the top now it is tight around that cable it used to be the old antennas you would just kind of clip on, you would wrap around with uh, a Velcro, Velcro shield. Yeah. And those were much more of a problem because they would move or yes. in really bad situations, they would actually dislodge and hit players. They've been some pretty dangerous situations. That ball clearly inside of the antenna, but we will have a replay. Keeps Betty at the line. She hit Chasse last time right into that that little pattern where North Star is running. Back row, Betty. Chasse wrist away. 
What a smart swing, Chase, with the wrist action on the right side. And that's one of the things I really like about her and Presley. It's just their versatility as attackers. Both take big rips from either side. Now they're going to have to keep Team Delacruz under 20 points here as Team Nutsara. Remember, we could go to a golden set if we're tied in the overall. White with the dig. Cruz ready. The block, <laughs> even more so. Caffey. Obviously, everybody knew where that ball was going. A high bump set to the outside. And Willow and Kathy smother this swing of Ari Cruz here. Team Delacruz is finding ways to hang on to that advantage. Yes, they are. Childress, nice dig. Too low for Johnson, and she can't poke it through. The strong hands of Ari Cruz have Newt Sara back within 166-67. The controlled dig of Childress here was pretty impressive. Look at this, huge rip from Yasiana Preston, and Childress just handles it. Yasinelli to the line. Cruz, Presley, and McCage front row. Trying to slow down the attack of Johnson. And they do it with the serve. How about that? Ali Bastianelli laces one, plants some trees, gets 12 points, and ties us at 67. That's a lot of work for one serve. That is. I mean, she accomplished a lot there with just one contact. And caused a timeout. <laughs> Pile that on. Well done, double nickel. 22-16, timeout team Dela Cruz. 67 all, Team Nutsara three away from what could be 100 team points. Mm. We split the first two, 25-21 and 26-24. Pardon me, we did not split the first two. <laughs> we had a victory by Dela Cruz, 25-21, 26-24. This could be one of those rallies. That is unknown at this moment. What is known is that you are planting trees with every ace if you're a server in this league. We're going to put 10 trees in the ground. They're committed by Aspiration. The Aspiration ACES program stays tuned throughout the year to see how many trees will be planted. And we've been putting some on the planet's surface tonight. Nothing new for Betty. Betty's pretty used to planting trees here at AU. Nutsara getting in on the action as well. We mentioned our international flavor coming into this match, showing off their serving skills. And now Ali Bastianelli. Middle blockers have been key in both matches tonight in terms of their impact on these matches. All right, 50 trees, where are they going? Are they in line? Does it look like some forest I saw in my travels in Germany where they're exactly in line? Do you like that? Like a grid, no I don't, it yeah. doesn't look like a forest. Yeah. I want random placement. To talk to Aspiration, see what the program looks like. 22-16, <laughs> what does the program look like right now for Team Dela Cruz if you're on that side, Coach Whittemore? Well, you know, I, I think what De La Cruz has done so well is their transition defense. That's where they put their emphasis this week, yesterday in practice after their first match. And so I think it's, you know, you obviously you want to take a big swing, but you don't have to win it with one swing. I think they've proven to themselves over the course of this match that they can win long rallies to hang in there. But I, I think what it looks like right now is balls to Willow Johnson. Why would you not? She's okay. in the front row right yeah. now. Yeah, front row, hot hand. Yeah. 16 kills, 410. I'm with you. We'll see. Got to pass first. Bastianelli with the ace last time. Another one back to back. And Betty not liking that pass at all. She makes a move to her left to try to pick one off here. Ali Bastianelli really does a good job of splitting the passers. 67-66 now leading in the overall. Bastianelli again, same spot. And there's Johnson, as Coach Whittemore called for. They're not changing the team name, but well done, Coach. This is actually, if Team Nutsara can close this match, this is the rotation. Willow Johnson and Betty De La Cruz both in the back row for Team De La Cruz. This is the rotation where they need to try to finish it out. A2 and they're struggling with the pass here. Where do you go offensively? Outside, Van der Weyde blocked, covered. Back again, number 21, second shot is a roll over the top winner. 
So they lead by one. Team Dela Cruz, 69 68. Oh, we could be closing in on a golden set right now. That is where we could be. If we side this one back and forth, we're going golden set. Maximum volleyball entertainment for everyone here. <laughs> and you at home. <laughs> Betty, not able to get underneath it. It doesn't get any better than this. We are tied at 69-69. So there are 100 points at stake as Yasiana Presley steps back to serve. We need a special color ball or something like the three-point <laughs> contest. Here we go, 100-point ball. Overhead, Johnson. Scoop what by a White. Dig. Ari, Doug, Ari again. Yes, winner. Twenty-five, eighteen earns them forty, and the seventy to sixty-nine earns them sixty more. Ari Cruz, plus one hundred to Team Nutsara. That was. A hugely important rip at the ball. If you were with us at the start, we said it is possible for a team to win the first two sets, but lose the overall Team Nutsara in comeback fashion. 25-18 with this. I love it. We're in week one, day two, and we've already seen the aggregate winner go to a, a team who only wins one set on this swing right here from Ari Cruz. What a big dig by Kendall White in that rally to keep things going. The 100 point ball swing from the veteran and Olympian number 24, Ari Cruz. She's had some big moments in her career. That was another one. Third year in AU and not a bigger swing, not a more valuable one. That, that'll do it for the matches tonight, Team Edmund versus Team Nutsara tomorrow, Battle of Young Talent, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Then we're gonna have Team Valentin Anderson looking for their first victory, facing off with Team Dela Cruz, who will also be looking for their first overall victory. So someone is going defeated on the weekend, someone gets a win. We're on ESPNU, we have your Monday night plan. All right, the plan was to send Savannah Collins to find the hero of the match. I think she did it. Absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. Ari, what a shift in this team going into the third set. Take us into the huddle and the conversation to change the momentum. Um, we know that we've been playing great, but like it's like at the ending of the, at the match that we needed to push more. So I just keep saying, let's just keep pushing. So we like keep getting closer. So we understand this innovation game is not about winning set, it's about winning the whole set. So in that timeout, it was 67-67. Hey, it's a game to three. If we really want to win, we need just near the push and everybody to be ready to swing. You were crafty. Your shot selection was beautiful tonight. Tell me how you were able to pick apart this defense. Um, hey, it's about uh, experience, you know, like knowing the players and knowing like, what the tendencies that I could do, but hey, it's all about communication behind the back row also. That helps me out to do some shots. You all had some serious fans pushing the energy of this team. How did they play into the bench and on the floor being able to rally? Hey, it's good having Thai fans. I, when you're in Nutsara's team, you're gonna have it all, all, all around the world, but hey, it's great. Everybody wants to put like a really, moment i have a good performance about everybody so we're enjoying it year after year you come to athletes unlimited and you just get better in more seasons did you set a goal or motto of this is what i want to do in year three um it just you know stay healthy and like keep working i knew that this year there were going to be like more younger players and they're really talented they're really explosive that's really like makes me work more but um giving my feedback as an experienced player to them helps like so much. And me entering like in the core, like um, stabilizing my like, the pass, it gave me more freedom for them to do their performance. Thanks, Ari. And from me and Missy both, go Gators. Yes. Appreciate yes. it. <laughs> Outstanding job, Savannah, getting in there and getting the Gators call as well. What, Missy Whittemore, what did we learn tonight? We learned that when you're watching Athletes Unlimited, you can't go to bed early. 
you got to stay until it's through because this scoring system is so much fun with those aggregate points on the line to see a team rally back in the third set and claim that 100. So exciting. Team photo in an epic evening for Team Newt Sara. Top 10 in the leaderboard has been fluctuating all night. We finally have it all pinned down, minus the MVP points yet to come. Ali Linehan still on top, 694. Leah Edmond via her fantastic performance, 628. See a lot of outside hitters there. And Sydney Hilly, setter at number three, Missy. Five of the top six come from Team Edmond. That tells you how many sets those ladies have won. Willow Johnson goes 17 kills, 420 in a losing effort. They lose by one. Ali Bastianelli, star of the match, too. 10 of 13 hits, 690. We're going to be back tomorrow at 7 Eastern and also at 930 on ESPNU. More Athletes Unlimited, another doubleheader. Team Nutsara and Team Edmund, Team Valentin Anderson and Team Dela Cruz trying not to go defeated on the weekend. Definitely want to come back for more fantastic action. Here from Mesa, Arizona, for Missy Whittemore, Savannah Collins, and our entire crew, I'm Kevin Barnett. Again, our final score, 70-69, Team Newt Sarah.